last class, oh, and I'm sorry I missed the class on your Monday, I couldn't change that. We have talked in the past about the different forms of business organizations, which are, what are the three business organizations? <laughs> Huh? Sole collaboration and uh, partnership. Corporation, so. partnership, and sole proprietorship. Okay. And know the difference between them and know the advantages and disadvantages of each one of those. All right. Then we talk next about the principal types of business. There's <laughs> financing, investing, and operations. So know those different types. Now we're going to move into the financial statements. There are four. We're going to introduce the four, but the fourth one is for a later class. It's a cash flow. So our objective today is to understand the financial statements that a business presents. Okay. Now, by law, a business has to present financial statements once a year, 12 months. Okay. Now, they can do it every six months, every three months. So, this business is on the stock exchange will produce quarterly financial statements. Quarterly financial statements, pretty good, but they're not audited, they're not verified. You can have semi-annual uh, financial statements, which is every six months, but you must have, you must produce the financial statement uh, for 12 months, okay? Now that 12 months can be any 12 months. Now there's a difference. The calendar year in business that's referred to as January 1st is the beginning of the calendar year, and December 31st is the end of the calendar year. But a business operates on what's called a fiscal calendar year. Fiscal, F-I-S-C-A-L. That simply means that they can choose whatever the first day, whatever they started. If they started March 1st, okay, then their fiscal year would be March 1st all the way around to February 28th. If they started July 1st, then their year is July 1st all the way around to June 30th, 12 months, no more than 12. That's called the fiscal year. Now, we're going to look at the financial statements based on the fiscal year. Now, the fiscal year can be exactly the same as the calendar year, January 1st to 31st, it doesn't matter. There are four statements. Now, the first three are what we're mainly concerned with today. But first off, we want to know how a business is doing it's in the business of providing a product or a service to customer. And you learn the words before uh, last class, that is revenue. They earn revenue by providing the product or providing the service. All right. And in order to earn that revenue, they incur expenses. Incur means they have to pay expenses. They have to pay rent if you're in there. They have to pay insurance. If they have employees, they have to pay wages. They have to pay ad via for the utilities. All right, the AC, does the we give us AC too? Uh, I forget, water. Those are expenses. So the first statement is called the income statement. That's what we call it in accounting. The old days, you used to call it a P&L statement. In terms of management, it's also called a statement of operations because this summarizes the operations of the business. Remember, financing, investing, and operations. This summarizes the operations. So it's the first statement, and it's called income statement. 
And basically, what we're going to do is look at the revenue minus the expenses and gives us net income. Now, people say income is revenue. No, no. Revenue is what we earn. Yes, yeah, money that comes in, but when we get the terminology right. Okay. Then the next statement is sort of a confusing statement for some people, but it's called retained earnings statement. Now we're going to look at these financial statements as they relate to a corporation. You recall a corporation is owned by the shareholders or the stockholders. They own that corporation. But the corporation earns profits, not the shareholders. The corporation earns profits, all right? Now, another word for profit is earnings, earnings. So the corporation earns a profit. A profit belongs to the corporation until they issue dividends so that the shareholders now get money from the corporation, okay? That money is referred to generally as earnings. So this statement is basically a summary of what the we've learned in the income statement, what the company has earned, and now we're going to look at how much of the earnings are going to be kept. Another word for kept is retained. If I retain something, that means I'm holding back. I'm not giving it to you. So this statement is, how much did the company return the profits to the shareholders, and how much did they retain? Right. Keep in mind we're talking language, so we've got to get the same language all the time. So that is related to the income statement, and it's also related to the balance sheet. Now the balance sheet is a summary of the assets a company owns. Remember we talked the other day. Another word for assets is resources. The company owns these things, a vehicle, plant, equipment, computers, in order to, and they're gonna use them up in order to earn money, revenue, sorry. In order to earn revenue. So a balance sheet is a list of what the company owns and is using to operate this business. The bottom part of the balance sheet is who owns those assets. If the business did not borrow any money, then they own all the assets. But it's smart businesses borrow money. When they borrow money, that's called liabilities. So the bottom part of the balance sheet is called um, liabilities and what's left over is shareholders equity. Now, the statement of cash flows I'll just introduce very briefly, but it's more of a subject of a later course. Finance, actually. All right, here is the copy of an income statement. It's simple. Now look at the title. Now these are formal financial statements. You know what I mean by formal? It means 100 years ago, if I did it exactly this way, and 100 years later, you're gonna have to do it exactly this way, Otherwise, you fail and you come back and do it again. This course is simple. I show you what you have to do, you do it. But this is a formal financial statement. That means it follows certain uh, traditions on the way that the information is presented. So when I get an income statement from a company in Sweden, I know that they follow the same rules that you're going to learn when you present financial statements, okay? So all around the world, this is the way it's done. First off, the heading. Heading is the name of the corporation, income statement. Now this statement is also called a period statement. Why? Because it's for the month. Remember, it's a certain time frame. What follows now, are the revenue and expenses just for one month. Which month? The one ended October 31st, 2022. 
Hasn't happened yet, eh? This is in the future. No. What year are we in now? 2022, right? October 31st. It's a time period statement. You understand what I'm saying? It's for a certain time period. And the heading has to tell you. If it said a year ending October 31st, 22, if it said a year ending that, then what follows is from November 1st, 1921, 2021, all the way around to December 31st, or to October 31st, 2022, because it says for a year. All right. If it said for three months ended October 1st, then it would be August, September, and October. From the beginning of August to the end of October. That's the period, and that's what they tell you. So you pay attention to that, and you get the period right. All right. Now, what happened? First of all, the first category is revenue. Revenue is what the business earned. You understand earnings? How did it earn it? It provided a customer with a product or it provided the customer with a service. And in any case, by providing the customer that product or service, they earn revenue. And so we show the total amount of revenue. Now notice there's two categories here. That's all there is, basic revenue and expenses. Now, this category, when we talk about the account, we end up service revenue. All right. And there are two categories. And outside here are the totals of the two categories. So if there's no summary, you go to the outside. If, however, this company had service revenue and sales revenue or rent revenue, then we would put rent revenue and we move in here, sales revenue plus the rent revenue, draw a line and put the total out here. But the total has to be out here related to that. And we do all that with financial statement. Now, the next category are expenses. And the definition of an expense what is that this was used up. Sometimes we use the word consumed. This was used up in order to earn that revenue. That's the definition of an expense. So they used, they paid salaries and wages. They paid rent expense. They used supplies. They had depreciation on their equipment. We'll get to these terms later on. Interest expense, insurance expense. It's easy to identify these because they generally end in the word expense. These accounts, these are accounts, and they end in the word expense, so it's simple. The revenue account ends in the word revenue, sales revenue, rent revenue, service revenue. But we're going to list them. And when we're going to list an ad, we move inside. Think of these as columns. So we move inside, and we list them, 52, 900, blah, 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 blah. We draw a line. But we carry the total to the outside. All right. So the total expenses, and there it is the here, 7740. So there's my revenue, there's my expenses. What's left? I'm going to net. You know what I net? I subtract. You know, five net three is two. I'm going to take revenue, net of expenses, subtract the expenses, and I get what's called net income. Another word for net income is profit. But on a formal financial statement, it's called net income. But in business, we refer to it as profit. We call it sometimes earnings. Those are words we use. Later on, you hear business people say the bottom line. You know what they mean by bottom line? That's this. Net income, what's the bottom line of that business? What's the net income? Now, I've got my net income. I simply subtract this from this. And I draw a line when I'm adding or subtracting. So this line means I'm going to subtract from here. 
And this line down here is double. And double means elapsed, finished. That's it. So this business, Sierra Corporation, earned $2,860. And any questions on that? So when I ask for an income statement, that's what I have format. You put the expenses first and revenue second on and lines columns in a different way. Lie. Exactly that. 100%. That's all the time. Understand. Now that 2860 belongs to Sierra. It's a corporation. It's separate from its shareholders. Remember that the definition? So that money belongs to Sierra. That's Sierra's earnings. Now they can give some of that back. They can keep it all if they want, or they can give it all back to the shareholders if they want, or they give a portion. And most businesses give you a portion, keep the rest in order to grow. Okay, you want to keep it. So what did this corporation do? Did it give it, did it keep it all? Did it give it all back to the shareholders? Or did it, did they give a portion back and kept a portion? Well, that is the, oh, the income statement. Now the definitions are curious. Income revenue for a specific time period, like I just went through. Net income is when revenue exceeds expenses. Net loss is when Expenses are greater than profits, than revenue. revenue. Now, let's try test our understanding on that. Let's join it in. Come on, more three places. Everybody get on this. All right, I'll start the quiz. Number one, to show how successfully your business performed for a specific time of year, you report the revenues and expenses in the income statement, balance sheet, or retained earnings. Everybody should get this one. Absolutely, it's the income statement. It's not the balance sheet. Okay. Next question. An income statement summarizes the change in retained earnings, reports the changes in assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity, or presents the revenue and expenses for a specific period of time. Yeah, I don't know why anybody would answer the other two. Obviously, they weren't paying attention. This is revenue and expenses. That's the only two types of accounts in there. Now, keep in mind, that this company earned a profit of 2,860. That is Sierra. So we have the next statement, formal, formal statement. And it's Sierra Corporation. And the name of this statement is called Retain Earnings Statement. And it too is a time period statement. Okay. Then what time is exactly the same time period as the income statement. The time period is the month ended October 31st. <laughs> now, obviously, this company just started business October 1st. How do I know that? Because it had no earnings on October 1st, prior to October 1st. So this company started business. October 1st. 
because retained earnings up to that point was zero. Now we add, notice the word add, net income that was just calculated on the income statement. So you go to the net income statement and you pick up the net income, 2,860. Now we draw a line. Well, that line means we're adding. So we only have now 2,860 as a retained earnings. Less. Now remember, when I give money back to the shareholders, that's called a dividend. And so I issue dividends to my shareholders. So this company issued dividends to the shareholders. How much? 500. So I'm going to subtract that. I draw a line. This line means subtract. This line means add. I draw a line and I subtract it. And that is the retained earnings, October 31st. Alas, double underline. That's it. Now, there's no summarizing. and this is the way it's laid out. Retained earnings begin. So next month, November 1st, at the end of November, we'll do retained earnings, November 1st, and it will be 2360, and then we'll add the net income that we get in November. But that's it. You simply add the net income, deduct the dividends, and this is the amount the company has kept. And this tells you the change in retained earnings. Now, if they didn't give a dividend, they would have kept it all. Or if they did the dividend exactly equal to the net income, then there'd be no change in the retained earnings. But that is the retained earnings. All right. It's a time period, same as the income statement. Oh, what happened? Yeah, okay. All right, back on to retained earnings at the end of the period is equal to retained earnings at the beginning of the period plus net income minus liabilities. Everybody's talking about liabilities. Retained earnings at the beginning of the period plus net income minus dividends or is equal to net income? Obviously. Retained earnings at the beginning of the period plus net income minus dividends. If retained earnings account increases from the beginning of the of the year to the end of the year, then net income is less than dividends, net loss is less than dividends. Or net income is greater. So it says if it increases. What's the answer to that? Oh, not bad. Six people got it right. No, net income is less than dividends. It will go down. Retained earnings will go down. And that makes up another point. A company cannot issue dividends greater than the net income. Otherwise, they're giving the shareholders back their own money. You understand what I mean? The shareholders put in 100,000 dirhams in this company. This company earned 10,000 dirhams the first year. Ah, but the company issues a dividend of 20,000 to the shareholders. Well, what are they doing? They're giving you all the profits plus 10,000 of the money that you invested in the company. So you see, by law, a company cannot issue a dividend that is greater than the net income they have earned that year. Okay? All right. Now you have to know all of these things. Question five. Retained earnings statement would not show. You see what it showed? Retained earnings beginning balance, revenue and expenses, or dividends? will not show. Right, okay, we're getting back on track. Sure, it shows dividends. That's why, that's why investors look at that statement to see, does this company issue dividends or not? All right, now, the balance sheet. 
Notice again, officially the heading. The heading is the name of the company, always. But this one's the balance sheet. But you know, it doesn't tell you what period. Why? Because this is only at one point in time. This is what the balance sheet is at the end of business, October 31st. Okay, that's all it is. Think of it as a snapshot of the business. On October 31st, they took a picture. These are the assets, these are the liability things. So if you think of the balance sheet as a snapshot, you know, in a snapshot, a camera, okay? Then the income statement and retained earnings statement, you can think of as a video, because they start October 1st, blah, 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 here's all the revenue till October 31st. Here's all the expenses till October 31st. So you see the income statement and retained earnings statement, you can think of it as a video of operations over a certain time period. But a balance sheet is always as at the end of business October 31st. Any questions on that? So that's why it's always said that that, the snapshot. It always starts off with the resources the company has. We call them in the old uh, word for resources, the old Italian word is assets. What are the assets? Those are things the company is going to use to earn their revenue. Cash. And you'll know that you'll, you'll learn next week that there's an order to why this is cash. Now, I don't like the way he did this. I would have preferred that he moved these over here in line with that. But anyway, cash, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is when I make sales and the customer is going to pay me later. I earn the revenue but I haven't got the flu yet, okay? <laughs> supplies, that's office supplies, that's, uh, you know, paper, pens, stuff like that. Prepaid insurance, we will learn these accounts. That's the insurance that you have on the building that we're talking, or we have maybe vehicles. And as you know, when you put insurance on your car, you pay for it in advance. You pay it for 12 months. So we call that prepaid insurance. And we'll learn how to handle that later. Then we have equipment. And we say net, net of depreciation, basically. So we list these assets. I would have preferred to list them in here. And total assets come out here. But basically, these are the assets, the resources the company has. Alas. Now, the second part is headed up liabilities. Remember the word liabilities? What I owe. So what this business owes and shareholders, or they call it stockholders, equity. Equity is what I own. For example, I buy a vehicle here for 50,000 dirhams. I pay 20 down and I borrow 30 from the bank to buy the 50,000. The 30 is a liability. The 20 is the equity I have in my car. You understand the term equity? What you actually own. So there's gonna be a listing of two things, liability and shareholders equity. So we start with liabilities. Notice the heading and the indenting. Uh, notes payable, accounts payable, Unearned service revenue, I'll explain all these as we go through. Uh, salaries and wages, you know that, payable. Liabilities basically are payables. And interest payable. Draw a line, because I'm gonna add them up. Total liabilities out here. See, there should only be total assets, liability, and shareholders equity, but I don't know why he did it this one. <laughs> then we have shareholders equity. Now, in this section, is what the investors invested in common stock. When they bought the common stock, what they did is they gave the company a hundred, they gave the company 
10,000 dirhams and a company gave them shares worth 10,000 dirhams. On the financial statements, we call that common stock. The word common is because later in your education, you'll realize that there's other types of stock, the bird stock and stuff like that, you learn that in finance. The common stock just, in our purposes, represent the money the shareholders purchase the shares for. And they hold, they own the company. And what has the company done for them? Well, it's earned. So notice the next one is retained earnings. And the retained earnings actually come from the retained earnings statements. Remember, it's two, three, six, zero. Draw on, I add these two, there's my total. Now, this is total liabilities and shareholders' equity. That's that, I add that with the liabilities and the shareholders' equity, I draw a line. And there it is, double underlined again. This has to equal this. These are the resources this company owns. And this is who owes, owns them. Liabilities are almost half, a little, not quite half, of the shareholders' equity. But liabilities plus shareholders' equity have to add up to the balance sheet. Any questions? <clears throat> okay, let's see what we got. So pay attention to what's called the balance sheet equation or it's called, um, basically, the, we're gonna call it a balance sheet equation. The balance sheet reports in a specific time period, assets, and the assets must equal the liabilities plus shareholders equity. We always list the assets first, then the liabilities, then the shareholders equity. So, the shareholders' equity comes from statement of retained earnings, the ending balance of statement of retained earnings. That belongs to the corporation, but it also is all part of the people who own the corporation. Okay. Now, the statement of cash flows um, is a very important statement, but I believe you'll get more of it when you get into finance because we can look at cash. Statement of cash flows is different. It only looks at cash. Cash that I get from operating, which is net income. Cash that I get from uh, financing, which is I borrow from the bank when, or I sell shares. And cash for investing. Remember our three types of activities? Investing, when I buy equipment or I sell equipment, then I, if I sell equipment, cash comes in. If I buy equipment, cash comes out. If I borrow money from the bank, cash comes in. If I pay the bank back, cash goes out. Operation, revenue, minus expenses. So the net income tells you what the cash is. Not going to spend too much time on that. All right. And it's basically the change in cash on the balance sheet. Okay, so here's an example. This would be like a problem that I would ask for you to do on an exam. This corporation began business January 1st, 2022, and had the following accounts on December 31st. So their fiscal year is the same as the calendar year. And here are their accounts in the accounting records. They have an account for accounts receivable, and it has a balance of 1,800 in that account. They have an account for accounts payable, and it has a balance of 2,000. They have an account for rent expense, those bill, common stock, which represents the value of the shares they sold. We don't know what the retained earnings are because we never will until we know if they started business, so they don't have any retained earnings. But until we do the net income statement, or the income statement, we won't know what the retained earnings. There's the equipment, insurance expense, there's the revenue, supplies, supplies expense. Now, 
Supplies is an asset, but I use it up, it becomes supplies expense. So as an asset, it will be reported on the balance sheet. Supplies expense will be reported on the income statement, cash and dividends. So do the income statement. Well, the first thing we do, corporation income statement, and this is for the year ended. Revenues, there is only one revenue account. And you know that because you go through the listing here and you pick up the account that says revenue. Simple, right? And there's only one, so it goes to the outside column. Then the next category are expenses. Okay, let's go back. All we have to do now is pick out everything that says expense, rent expense, uh, insurance expense, supplies expense. And we total them and we draw a line. Now you can list these expenses. Oh, he made a mistake here. They should be pushed down a bit. You can list them in any order you want. But you draw a line, total expenses 10,002, then net income. And the same line as the revenue and expenses, and you subtract them, 6,800. Okay, now we want to do the retained earnings statement. Again, retained earnings for the year ended. And at the beginning of the year, I had no earnings. I just started, so it's zero. I add the net income. 6,800, draw a line. The total I have that is owned by the shareholders is 6,800. How much did I give back to the shareholders? Ah, less dividends this time, 600. So I'm keeping, I'm retaining 6,200 as retained earnings. So there's my second statement. Now my third statement is the balance sheet. Again, balance sheet at one point in time, the end of business, December 31st. Assets, list the assets. Cash, accounts receivable, supply, super back. Uh, accounts receivable is an asset. Um, equipment is an asset. Supplies is an asset. Cash, definitely. But you always list cash first. Cash, 1400. Supply uh, accounts receivable, supplies equipment. So the total amount of resources here is 23,200. Double underline. Who owns those resources? Well, I owe money to the bank, I owe money to other people. How much do I owe? 7,000 in total. That means if I don't pay them, they can come and claim my assets. They can take my assets. They are owed that money. So you see, we say that the, the people who own the liabilities, our creditors, have a claim on the assets. Do you understand a claim? Claim means I have the right to come and take it because you owe me that money. I have a claim. So who are the liabilities? Well, that is very easy. You look for payable, accounts payable are businesses that I owe money to. Notes payable is maybe a bank that I sign a note saying I owe you. And that's all the payables they are. So there's your two payables. Notes payable, accounts payable. We move to the inside, draw a line, Total liabilities to the outside. Now, what about the shareholders? Well, there are two accounts for the shareholders. One, common stock. That's the amount of money they put in. Two, the amount of money the company has retained, retained earnings, which I already calculated. So I just simply use that again. 10,000 is the common stock. They retained 6,200. Therefore, what the shareholders own of these assets is 16,002. I add the liability of shareholders and 
equals the asset. Any questions? No? Do it exactly like that. All right, start to lose. Okay, now get to know the language here. Liabilities. What are liabilities? Future economic benefits, debts and obligations, process service potential. Fine. Debts and obligations of the company. I have a liability. If I'm the company, if I'm the company, I have a liability to pay the notes. I have a liability to pay the accounts. Future economic benefits are assets. Those are assets. Now, in this country, that's easy to remember because you see, an asset is a resource. And what's the main resource in this country? Oil. What does oil actually represent? Future economic benefits. So you see the logic there? Okay. Question seven. I might have repeated that already. I don't know. Which financial statement is presented first? Income balance sheet, income statement, and retained earnings. All right, I don't know who said balance sheet, but they should be sitting in another class. Or they have been, I don't know, their mind's somewhere else. Liabilities of company are owed to its language, debtors, owners, or creditors. Time's up. Right. I can understand why you might have said debtors, whoever said that. But it, creditors is three. Number nine. The balance sheet shows. Revenues, liabilities, shareholders' equity. Revenues, expenses, and dividends, assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. Now, I may say shareholders sometimes, stockholders, language. Don't be confused. Obviously, it's the third one. Okay, let's see if we can get better here. Payments to shareholders are called. Expenses, liabilities, dividends. Good, very good. Okay, let's keep going. Oh. The accounting equation, it's also called the balance sheet equation. And that is expressed as assets equal shareholders equity minus liability, assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity, assets plus shareholders equity equal liabilities. Okay, got a lot of work to do in this class. I don't know why six people would say that. But... But we got a long time. We got 13 weeks. We'll get this straight. Shareholders' equity is is what is usually equal to the cash on hand. Is equal to liabilities and retained earnings. Includes retained earnings and common stock. <laughs> good. Good. I realize this is all the first time you've seen it. You're doing pretty well. Claims. Remember I mentioned claims of owners are called of owners this time. Liability, shareholders, equity, or dividends. Claims on the assets. 
The creditors have a claim on the assets. These are the claims of the owners. So they're called shareholders equity. Whoa, no, this is owners, not creditors. Uh, this is seven. Go to the last one. Okay, seven. Let's go, everybody. You don't have to be on Teams. You have to be on Blackboard. Any class. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll read it for everybody. Windsor Inc. And everybody has the same problem with different numbers. So don't think, I'm going to wait till Yara finishes and copy her numbers. It won't work. Yeah, provide consulting services was started, was founded October 1st. The end of the first month of operations, prepare an income statement, retain. Now, this is exactly like we did. So here we go. We have accounts payable, interest expense, equipment, salary expense, and so on. The first statement is the income statement. So go down, Yara. Income statement for what period? Click on that. Is it for the, click on it. The month ended October 31st, the year ended, or just October 31st? Month ended, very good. Click on, are you doing this? Everybody does this. I'm not just talking to you on here. Everybody, because you're going to be recorded in my records. And if you've got nothing there, actually, my first so then, now by the time we finish this class, hopefully by 4 3, we'll have this problem done. If not, you have to do it for homework. That's to be done by next class. Okay, you got the month ending. What's the first thing we start off with? Income statement. What do we start off with? What's, yeah, revenues. Go down. Okay, now go back to the problem and look for the account that has the word revenue in it. Oh, there it is. Service revenue. What? You this? Is this question seven? Get in the other, okay? Okay, now you can cut and paste this if you want. Service revenue, and put it down there. Course materials. You got it? Put it in. Okay, what's the next category? Down the two, this one. Here. Down the two. Down the two. Over there. Number one. You got it? Okay, come around here and he'll show you where it is. Okay, expenses. So the next category is expenses. Put expenses in there, yeah. Expenses. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 la, la, la. Revenues is a heady. That. What's the name of the account? You put the name of the account here. So take that out. Go back up. What's the name of the account? Service, Service revenue. So put that in there. Yeah, it'll come up, you see? Okay, now go to the outside here and put the number. Okay. Then go to the next section, it's expenses. Okay, good. What's the first expense? Go back to the accounts and get the first expense. Okay, interest expense. Right. Okay, how much? No, no, yeah. Okay, 410. Go to the outside, put 410. There you go, 410. You okay? You're on track now? Everybody? Get the next expense. Put the account heading in. You already, you got three. You already finished it? Well, you're doing, no, we're doing chapter seven. We're doing question seven. Okay, but you have to do the others anyways. All right, so now you got it. 
Okay, what's the next one that says expense? Oh, in that, yeah, let me explain something here. This one, unearned service revenue, it's a weird account. We will be seeing this one again, believe me. But right now, it's an, let me, no, never mind, just keep going, get the expenses. <laughs> Supply expense for a it's a live, it's a liability account. It's not an expense account. Right. Then you're going to get depreciation expense. Oh, that's it. Yeah. And then depreciation expense. Yeah, sure. Good. Get the amount. You can copy and paste. Okay. Now, that's the end of the expenses. So, clicking on that, what am I looking for? Total expenses. Yeah, total expenses. And the line is drawn, so now get a calculator out, or do the calculator as part of this, and add those together and put it over here. Yes. Yes. Now the reason I like this is because everybody has different numbers. Okay, all right. Did you get the total? Okay, now you've got the revenue and you got the expenses. What's the difference? Right. Up there. Net income. If it's a loss, we put it in brackets. All right. Now subtract the two, and what do we have? Okay, put it in. All righty. What do we have? 482. Okay, what do you have? After we added all of them. That, subtract that, about 16,000 and something. Okay, take that out of there. What is the answer? And that's double underline. Okay, let's see if you've got your numbers right. Hit that. Go up, are we all green? We like green, go all the way up. All the way, right there, yeah. All right, time's running short. Now keep going, go to the retained earnings statement. All right, getting back 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Okay, this is retained earnings. It too is a time period. What time period? Right. Right then. No, not the year ended. Month ended. Okay. We always start off with retained earnings beginning. So go to retained earnings October 1st. They put zero in here, just put zero. Now add, add net income. Now go back to your income statements. Go back to your income statement. No, your income statement. Right. And copy this number. This is your net income. Right. Okay, now. Um, go down a bit. Hit something here. No, there shouldn't be any. Add these two together. Put 16 eight in here. I don't know what he wants here. What's this? It would be total retain earnings, I guess. Can you go down? Get this down. Get this down there. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know. Forget about it. Okay. There's no dividends. We'll put retain earnings October 31st. Okay. Get the end. Uh, submit an answer. If they pay dividends, but there are no dividends, so it's correct. Now go to the balance sheet. Okay, balance sheet, heading. What's the proper heading for the balance sheet? It's a snapshot. Right. At the end of business, October 31st. Hang in there. Uh, yes, you are. My next slide. Yeah, right now, the one we're doing now, the big one, the other ones are easy. All right, first asset, cash. Good. How much? No, all the way up. All the way up. All the way up. Okay, you gotta go through cash right there. Okay, next one. I don't know. Let's go up. Let's go and see if they have it. Yeah, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. That's the money that's owed to me. You become more familiar with these accounts the more we do them. And how much was that? Right. You're doing great, Yara. Okay. Now let's go back up. I don't know what else is there. Supplies? Yeah. Now this is the assets, supplies. Accounts receivable. Oh, it's fell. Okay. Supplies and then equipment. Supplies. Yeah. yeah. You got the number in there. Okay, equipment. There you go. You're getting real good at it. Go back to the equipment. Right there, 10,000, 50,000. Okay. Now that's all the assets. So last, you totally assets. Total assets. Total what? Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, put total. Should be, yeah, total current assets. Okay. No, it's not current. No, that's not the right. Go back. Um, total assets right there. One about it. Okay, add those up. You guys okay? You coming along? Yes. Work together. Are you? What's the excuse now? You don't have teams. You don't have like or what? I'm just. <laughs> Okay, so total that 58,000. Okay, now we go liabilities. So, liabilities. Ah, okay, good. First liability. Oh, how many liabilities do you have? Let's go back. We got a lot of them. Go all the way up. Accounts payable. Anything that says payable. Also, unearned service revenue is a liability. Accounts payable? Yeah. Accounts payable? Put the total in. Now, unearned service revenue is a liability. You know, you heard me. Just take my word for it today. Unearned service revenue. Unearned. What have you got there? 
So watch that all text. Good. Right. Now, good. Copy and paste that. Okay, now put the next one unearned service revenue. Unearned right there, service revenue. Okay, go back up. Unearned service revenue is a liability. You're going to have to take my word for it today. Okay. What else do we have? We have other tables? Let's go. Yes. Wages and salaries payable and interest payable. Everything payable. Liabilities payable. So you see the accounts we use to keep track of these things. This is a revenue account. We call it a revenue. So it's kind of all expense. It's a liability. You pay it. Okay. The what? The order of liquidity. No, not for Good question. Okay. Total goes up. Total liabilities. Right. So total them up. And put them in there. Now you get three chances at this. So you make a mistake, don't worry, you got another chance. You This is the balance sheet. All right, now, shareholders' equity or kind of, what are they going to call it? Uh, shareholders' equity. First of all, capital common stock. Yeah, there you go. You have to just type it in and get the number. How much common stock? You're in the income state. We're in the balance sheet. Okay. Retained earnings. Now go back. To, there you go. Now go back to your retained earnings statement. No, no, you're not going to find it up there. You got to go to your retained earnings statement. Where's your retained earnings statement? Right there. Copy that. 16870. Okay. Add those two total shareholders equity. Okay. That's your interest You got it wrong. You won't get the statement. You can't get the statement right then, then the balance sheet. It all works together. Yeah, that's zero. Yeah, then you add, then they become a 
Okay. Did you tell her? Add this and this. And you got 57, 58 something. All right. Submit. Oh boy. Submit. Good. All right. So the total is 58050. Go up. Go up to the total assets. What are the total assets? The total assets 50, 58050. Balance sheet. It's called the balance sheet because the assets equal liability plus shareholders' equity. Now we ran out of time, but don't worry, we're going to do a lot more of these statements. You must become very familiar with them. But I'm going to do something in the next class.